This is my 2002 Audi TT 225. I bought this car intentionally as a project knowing that it had a bunch of blemishes. One of the largest gashes on the car came with it when I bought it, and I've been wanting to fix it ever since I got it. From looks alone, it looks like the previous owner decided to take this car across a curb, gouging out and denting part of the side skirt in the process. Today I want to test one of the most popular paint restoration kits on the internet, Color and Drive. First things first, I want to take the panel off and see if I can pop out the dent. In all likelihood, I think the proper way to do this would be to remove both wheels so you can take the wheel arch liner off completely. A faster way to do this with the wheels still on the car is to pull the liner back just enough to reach the bolts behind it. Turning the front wheel a little bit will give you just enough room to do this and it'll be smooth sailing. Is that all turned? Holy crap! Whoa! Well, apparently this is completely full of dirt, which I think is absolutely hilarious. So we might even be doing a little bit of weight reduction if you catch my drift. I'm not trying to take this completely apart. My goal is to just get this fender, kind of offside skirt fender, I don't really know what it is, but we're gonna get that off so we can try to push the dent out just a little bit. That's my goal. We'll also be able to take it inside where it's warm so we can paint it properly. Once the bolts behind this panel are removed, the next thing is to remove the bolts underneath the car. These are horrendously annoying since they're covered with a sort of foam and it is caked on and clearly been there for years. This was a really long process, but it was really satisfying to actually get these to come off. Finally, that was literally ridiculous. It's so caked on, it's not even funny. My go-to tool for this was one I made by chipping the end off of a flathead screwdriver that I was no longer using. I could chip off the foam on the outside of the bolt and stick the end inside the Torx bit to get enough room to pull the foam out of there. This was a really long process, and removing these five or six bolts took over an hour. So we're finally starting to make progress, which is really exciting. In a similar fashion to the front of the car, I took the wheel arch liner out of the back, just enough to remove the bolts holding the side skirt on. This wheel doesn't rotate, obviously, so it's a little harder to get to, but if you have a stubby socket wrench, it works just fine. Next, we're going to take off the sill on the inside, this aluminum part right here, because I think there's gonna be bolts underneath this. We're gonna figure out how to do that and get that part removed. This piece is actually really easy to take off. There's really just an adhesive and three clips holding it on. Two of them are in the back of the car near the seats and the other one is in the front. When I reinstall this, I decided to use some leftover 3M tape and a little bit of adhesive to make sure that it fit flush. I was greeted with way more bolts than I thought would actually be in here and boy was today a wrench turning day. Once these bolts are all taken off, the side skirt's really only being held on with that foam that was covering the bolts at the bottom. So you can simply pry it out if you have enough leverage. Mine got a little bit hung up in the front of the car, so I used a screwdriver to get through some of the foam that was stuck on there. Now to accurately show you the damage on this piece, what I'm gonna do is clean the panel. It's been snowing for the last few weeks off and on, so I haven't had a chance to actually wash my car. Even after I've just started to clean it, you can start to see how bad the gash is. Not only that, but this piece is actually dented, and since the body of the TT is made out of aluminum, I don't think I'm going to be able to completely pull this dent out. My main goal by doing this was to get all the dirt and grime out of the crevices themselves. Now it's time for me to be honest with myself. Do I think this piece will look good as new when I'm done? not in the slightest. I know realistically all this is gonna do is make the scratches less noticeable. And honestly, that's fine with me. I have every intention to wrap this car as soon as it gets warm enough to do so. In the process of doing that, I will likely be getting some side skirts for the car to help with the look. It makes more sense in my mind to just pretty this piece up as much as I can in the meantime and focus on wrapping those parts when they get in. Plus, I have always wondered how these paint correction kits work and if they're actually any good, so this will be a fantastic learning experience for the both of us. On the Color & Drive website, you can enter the make and model of your car and pull up your specific paint code. They'll send you a factory matched paint and their multi-step solution for honestly a really good price. I think I paid around 30-ish dollars for this and it came with a lot more than I was expecting. 
It looks like it's a multi-step process, so I'm going to follow the directions they have to the T. After cleaning the part and letting it dry, the first thing you want to do is actually just apply the paint. This paint's designed to match the factory color and it goes directly into the scratches. Even just watching this video, you can see how accurate their color matching is, which I was honestly really impressed with. The only way you can tell it's not the factory color is because this doesn't have a clear coat on it yet. Though, according to their directions, I'll have to wait a few days to polish and buff this paint. After the paints on, the other three steps that came with the kit were mostly just to wipe off the excess and put on their version of a semi-clear. Then I put a bit of their wax and paste on it to make it look a little prettier. Now setting this clean panel next to a dirty car isn't really a fair comparison, but I think the color match is honestly spot on. I decided to reinstall the piece to get a better idea of what it would look like. Putting this piece back on was actually way easier than removing it because we didn't have to deal with caked on or stuck bolts. I simply replaced all the bolts in reverse order, making the piece look as though I had never even touched it. If you're doing this to your car, I suggest you hold the side skirt flush to the car where you want it before you put these screws in. These screws have a lot of movement and play in them so you can adjust the body panel gaps. Basically, take your time, make it look how you want it. These happen to be the only parts in this process that aren't directly screwed into the car. These go behind the front wheel well. They're clamps that hold the side skirt to the fender panel and you can put a screw through them just like this. You may have to go by feel for this part, but you'll get it eventually. Now that we're all buttoned up, it's time to go over the results. This is the area in question before I did anything to it. This is that same area after reinstalling the side skirt. The scratches don't have the clear coat on it yet, but I'm impressed so far. This is actually from a few days later after I washed and polished the entire car. It's still not perfect, but for $30, this is a tremendous improvement. Even though it's not perfect, I really like the results that this kit offered. I think I'll eventually go with side skirts when I wrap the car just because I want completely uniform body parts. But being able to change the look of a piece from this to this for $30? I mean, this is a no-brainer. While I have you here, let me show you the two styles of side skirts I'm debating between for this car. I don't want something completely obnoxious, so I'm mostly just going to replace these factory panels with something that's slightly more aggressive. You can leave a comment to let me know which version you like more and which one you'd like to see on the car. I'm finally starting to get parts in, so starting next week, we're going to have a lot to install. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. If you did, consider liking the video and subscribing. I really love making these kind of videos, and the amount of support support you guys give me is unreal, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.